but I didn't know if I would do this as part of the uh, of the reading. Uh, but uh, from a series of poems called uh, That Dada Strain, who some of you will remember as a jazz standard of the 1920s, uh, yeah, and the, the, the version with words uh, you know, that I have in mind is, is Ethel Waters. Uh, you know, but um, uh, in, in naming the series of poems that Dada strain, of course, it's with reference to European Dada. Uh, so I'll do the, uh, the opening poem and uh, uh, a sound poem by uh, Hugo Ball from Cabaret Voltaire uh, in 1916, and uh, uh, then a poem uh, spoken to uh, Hugo Ball is one of the Dada founders. Uh, that Dada strain, the zigzag. Mothers of the gods of science, the lunatic, fixed stars and pharmacies, fathers who left the tents of anarchism unguarded, the arctic bones strung out on Saint Germain, like tom-toms, living light bulbs, aphrodisia, art is junk, the urinal says, dig a hole and swim in it, a message from a grim computer. We are hamburgers. <laughs> For that evening's reading, he had made himself a special costume. His legs were in a shiny blue cylinder, which reached up to his hips so that he looked like an obelisk. Over it, he wore a huge coat collar cut out of cardboard, scarlet on the inside, gold on the outside. It was fastened at the neck in such a way that he could give the impression of wing-like movements by raising and lowering his elbows. He also wore a blue and white striped witch doctor's hat. Caravana. Olifanto. Bumbla, oh, fali bumbla, krasiga mpa abla orem, higiga goraben, higo loiko, rosala huyu, holaka, holala, anla go boom, bla go boom, bla go boom, bo so fataka, Shampa vula vusa olobo e tata gorem e shige tsumbada ulubu subudu ulu subudu tumba ba umf kusa gauma ba. A glass to ecstasy for Hugo Ball. A glass to for my leg, says Hugo Ball. My hat, a cylinder in blue and white. The night, the German ostriches, the sink he pisses in. All these become his world. His Dada song, begun there, holds the image until it comes at us. The image from its cross looks down, a ribbon, a revolver, mud. These contribute to his death, also to what his death contributes. Later, too hysterical, too sick with God and time, a carousel, a roasted poet, fish, the queen says to his mind, and enters where the street of mirrors starts. She sees his face reflected in hunger of the world as pain, the consciousness of death, not why we die, but why we dream about it, 
and why our dreams can't save the dying remnant Hugo, as I write this poem, the voice cries from a further room, the dancer singer calls me from a further room, I step into an obelisk below the waist, my mouth opens to sing, but freezes shut in grief for you, Ambula, Take, Pitri, Solencola, the collapse of language, Tapla, Tukta, Tukta, Takabala, Taka, Taka, class two, ecstasy escapes from time, ba Bula Mbalam, the image and the word over your bed hang crucified. Again, the cabaret explodes. Again, again, fatigue, one foot in glass, a glass nerve, and a priestly gas pump pulls her hair out. <laughs> they ran away. <laughs> they just left this here and, and disappeared. <laughs> okay, I, I will be reading entirely from, uh, from Eye of Witness. Uh, which was a chance to do, uh, along with uh, Heriberto Yepes, uh, a, a reader of my work, uh, you know, but taking in, in, uh, across genres in different forms, uh, some of which are not suitable for a reading uh, situation. I'm not going to you know, stand up here and read from an essay on total translation or poetics, uh, but, uh, uh, but enough of it is, uh, is suitable for the occasion. There's also visual poetry in here, and uh, uh, scripts for performance works and near plays, uh, theater of a sort. Um, and it uh, spans uh, more years and some ways it's comfortable. Uh, well, it isn't comfortable to say that. <laughs> uh, you know, on the other hand, to get a curious perspective uh, on things. Uh, the book is partly chronological, and often is not. But I'll start with a, uh, uh, a manifesto from the uh, early 1960s, uh, a, a time in which I was given, as others were, to, uh, to write in these short uh, manifestos. And this is in four parts. One, I will change your mind. Two, any means equals methods to that end. Three, to oppose the devourers equals bureaucrats system makers, priests, etc. William Blake. Four. And if thou wouldst understand that which is me, know this, all that I have said I have uttered playfully, and I was by no means ashamed of it. Jesus Christ to his disciples in the apocryphal Acts of St. John, which my friend Jack so well. <laughs> okay. So it, it begins with uh, uh, Blake, a quotation from the marriage of, of heaven and hell, and it goes into the first poem in the book. By degrees we beheld the infinite abyss fiery as the smoke of a burning city. Beneath us, at an immense distance, was the sun, black but shining. Round it were fiery tracks on which resolved vast spiders crawling after their prey, which flew, or rather swam, in the infinite deep. In the most terrific shapes of animals sprung from corruption, and the air was full of them, and seemed composed of them. These are devils and are called powers of the air. I now ask my companion, which was my eternal lot? He said, between the black and white spiders. <laughs> A little boy lost, and the title is from Blake. They took me from the white sun, and they left me in the black sun. 
left me to sleep among long rows of overcoats. I was a city boy lost in the country. A wound in my hand was all I knew about willows. Can you understand? Do you hear the wide sound of the wind against the cow's side and the crickets that run down my sleeve, crickets full of the night with bodies like little black suns? Try as I will. There is only this cry in my heart, this cry. They took me from the white sun and they left me in the black sun and I have no way of turning now, no door. These are a couple of poems I wrote about the same time. The, uh, the uh, uh, little boy lost that appeared in my first book, uh, for, or the first book of my own poetry. My first book was here in San Francisco, City Lights Books, called New Young German Poets. Uh, but there were some poems that didn't get into the first book or the second book or the third, and, you know, and that I already came upon, brought back uh, into print later on. So. Um, is called The Light Bulb and the Cockeyed Queen of Poland. There is something following you, but when I looked behind me, the two women pointed. At what? The sun in the bowl isn't cautious. Why should she wonder? No dignity in that. My shoes? A turn of the lock equal death, the two women pointed, there is something following you. The sun in the bowl isn't cautious, but when I look behind me, a turn of the lock equal death. No dignity in that. The two women pointed at what? There is something following you. My shoes, a turn of the lock equal death. Why should she wonder? The two women pointed at what? The light pole and the cockeyed queen of poles. No dignity in that. <laughs> How tragic it is to be a king and live in a palace and never have time to be gay. <laughs> Something about it was sad. You could tell it was sad. Either the king or the queen or myself was mad, but something was sad, it was terribly sad, it was wrong. You could tell it was wrong. The king had been ailing for days, so loud and so long, that his ermine robe couldn't take any more and blew out its spots. Oh yes, it was sad. It was ridiculous too, but first it was sad, and second it was wrong, and third it was cold. <laughs> it was terribly cold. It was coldest under the throne. It was everything under the throne. I think, said the queen, it is mice. I think it is rain, said the king. I think it is night. It is oddly and strangely like night. The hand of the moon, the hand on my shoulder is white. It is terribly white. It is wrong. The queen ran into my bed. The chamberlain stood by the door. The king tripped over the floor. He fell down and landed head last on my canopy. I think, said the queen, it's the king. I think it's the spring, said the king. I think it's the wind. It sounds like the wind. It is oddly and strangely the wind. It is oddly and strangely like night, or the rain, or the wind. I'm sure, said the king, it's the wind. I'm sure, said the queen, it's the king. After she said it, they carried him out. After she said it again, they brought him back in. He was too thin to laugh, so we cried. He was too fat to fart, so he died. <laughs> and we buried him under a royal bed of the queen's own favorite royal begonias, except for his head sticking out of the ground like a flower. And then we wept. Christ, how we wept. Buckets, we wept. It's sad, said the queen, and it was. <laughs> there was a, again, this is, 
I caught Venus 50 years ago. <laughs> series of poems called The Seven Hells of Jigoku Zoshi. Uh, Jigoku Zoshi is a, a traditional Japanese scroll uh, you know, depicting uh, the hells. The first hell of measures where swindlers measure fire in the iron boxes. How can any of you know what it feels like to count coins in hell? You have the rest of it to keep you busy. Your eyes are troubled enough. But down here the nights are longer and the days are senseless. Down here the rain falls upside down from iron boxes. The smoke inside the narrow room pulls back. It winds around the bedpost like a colored cloth around the leg that's bleeding, violet and green with pain. What should we say to our fingers? Should we remind them of the cool silk yards they handle behind counters, the healing lotions rolled between the palms? Should we tell them that the earth crawling with black grief at least was wet? One, two. Blue coins of disaster are ringing in the night. The distant call of metal birds is like the rhyming in bad poems before your birth. You would not know me now. The fire at my ribs has emptied me of flesh and words. I stand here with the others counting, letting the numbers fill my head and outlaw. One, two, three, four, five. I want to turn aside, but hell won't let me. Hell is the outraged customer who slams the cash box against my hands. A candle drips along the sidewalk. Wax covers the windows of a small store and blurs the sun. A darkness full of crates through which I walk, thinking of other hells than this. The skin cries under the brand of intellect. The seat of numbers raising questions of the mind that's helpless. The fevered brow. Smash it to hell. You have a right to it. One, two, three, four, five. The white eye watches through the window. Where we live is where we always live. The seat of death. 